I'm at Arns du Penfulic in uh, southern Brittany, um, in, uh, the, in an estuary. Arns is French for estuary. Um, and here we have uh, the estuary in front of me. It's um, a quiet water setting. This is actually what we would call a rear uh, valley. That's where the sea has invaded a river valley. Um, so they've got saline water coming in, which obviously meets with the fresh water from the river, uh, which is the definition of, of an estuary. And as you can see, I'm standing on mud flats. So this estuary is tidal. Although it has been messed around with, with by human interference, uh, it still is an estuary. It still has the tides coming in and going out, flooding and ebbing every day. Um, estuaries are then this combination of saline and fresh water. And it's the mixing of uh, those two water bodies that determines what type of estuary a given estuary uh, can be classified as. Um, and they're classified according to what uh, has become known as the salt balance principle. And that is basically the mixing of the fresh and the salt water. And the two different water types of water can mix in two different ways. Um, they, they tend to remain separate unless they are mixed because of the density differences. Fresh water being less dense than saline. And so in an undisturbed sort of situation, the fresh water would lie on top of the saline water because saline water is more dense. But with mixing processes, that, that situation can change. And the two different types of mixing processes that uh, occur, one is called diffusion. And that is about essentially the chemical uh, exchange of salt between the two waters. So ionic composition of the water leads to diffusion, uh, which is the transfer of uh, salt from one water body to another. And so that can even out the uh, salinity of a given water body. But a physical mixing mechanism, just like stirring up the water, is called advection. And that is due to turbulence in the water. And that turbulence can come from any sort of uh, uh, mechanical or physical um, interference, such as waves, such as uh, tidal currents, and so on. And so, um, according to the salt, ba salt balance principle, an estuary can be classified into one of four types. Now, uh, the first one, uh, is called the, the stratified estuary or the type A estuary of some authors and that is where you've got very limited advection, very limited mixing and so you get a, a, a layer of fresh water on top of a layer of saline water and the, because the tide, the, the saline water comes in with the tide it actually comes in as a wedge underneath the fresh water and so as well as it being called a stratified estuary it's sometimes called a salt wedge, salt wedge estuary and if you go down the water column and look at the salinity, it's very fresh at the top, but then it jumps very quickly when it reaches that salt water to become very salty. Now, sediment coming down the estuary in a salt wedge estuary um, may get deposited, if it's coming along the bed, at the tip of the salt wedge. And we get a, a bar often forming there. Or if it's in suspension in the fresh water over the top of this saline water, then it can actually go out as a buoyant plume into the ocean and get dispersed with the longshore drift currents and so on. Um, so that's a salt wedge estuary, uh, or type A. But if you start to get a bit of a mix, mixing going on in the estuary, um, if the tidal range is perhaps a bit higher, um, or if there's wave um, energy in there, or indeed if the river water, river flow is, is, is high, um, then that can mix it to become a partially mixed estuary. And one of the characteristics of a partially mixed estuary is that you have the salt water at the bottom again, and you have the fresh water over the top, but in between them there is a mix zone where you have this cycle of um, saline water and fresh water intermixing through advection. Um, and that actually entrains sediment in it, so that any suspended sediment coming down from the river will get trapped in this loop um, to create a cloudy plume of water, which we call the turbidity maximum. And the turbidity maximum, uh, this cloudy uh, mass of water, goes upstream with the, with the flood tide and then downstream with the ebb tide. But it, it, so, it, so it moves, and sediment uh, is trapped, really, in, in that loop. Uh, and that's when you have a partially mixed estuary. Now, the third type you can find in nature is what we call the well-mixed estuary. That's when uh, you might have a, a macro-tidal situation where you've got very high tides um, flooding in with the flood tide, a lot of um, high-energy tidal currents effectively mixing the estuary very well. And in that particular type of estuary, um, there is no vertical uh, change in salinity from the top to the bottom. So if you did a salinity profile, it, no matter where you were in the estuary, it wouldn't vary. It would be the same salinity from top to bottom. That salinity, however, may vary along, laterally along, along the estuary, so it might be more fresher at the uh, river end and uh, more saline at the sea end of the estuary.
but essentially it, it's very well mixed. Um, processes in there, uh, the sediment tends to get uh, retained within the estuary uh, uh, as an estuary sink until perhaps you have a river flood that flushes it out. Um, the fourth type, uh, type D, uh, is a more of a theoretical end member, it's never really been found in nature. That's when the whole uh, basin of the estuary is the same salinity from top to bottom uh, and from side to side and there's no variation whatsoever. But that's more of a theoretical end member. Um, now, with estuary sediments, uh, there are two different categories of um, estuaries in terms of their sedimentology. If the water is clear, uh, then we say it's a non-turbid estuary. And typically those types of estuaries will contain uh, sand uh, and gravel, so quite coarse sediment. But if the water is muddy, as it is here, um, then we would call this a turbid estuary. And it would deposit out um, mud uh, on, on the surfaces to form mud flats. Now, when the tide rises, um, it carries with it the mud. And um, when it reaches, uh, on, on the flood tide, when it reaches the, uh, the turning of the tide, when you have a, a, um, a slack water phase, that mud can settle out. And it settles out more rapidly if the mud particles are bigger. And clay particles can actually bond together, uh, become cohesive through a process of uh, flocculation. Um, and these flocks, when they grow, can become heavy enough to be deposited. But that usually happens when you've got zero tidal currents, i.e. around slack water, when you have this change from flood to ebb tide. Um, if we have a look along, uh, we can see that the mudflats are typically up on the higher reaches of the estuary, uh, on the sides in the high intertidal zone, um, because at slack water they tend to uh, de be deposited there. And then when the ebbing tide, when the ebb starts, the ebb tide isn't strong enough to take it back to remove it from those high reaches of the intertidal zone. But once the ebb tide gets going, it can more effectively scour the lower parts of the intertidal zone and take the mud back out and hold it in suspension and so on. So we tend to have a buildup of mud uh, at the sides of the estuary. Um, firstly, lo lower down as mud flats, but then higher up as salt marshes. And we'll be able to see some of those salt marshes as we go further down this estuary.